In this video, I'll be demonstrating how to install a Type 2 surge arrestor in a DIN rail DB board. I have two T2 surge arrestors here from different manufacturers. Once the surge arrestor has operated, the display will show you that it is no longer functional. For example, the CBI one over here has a green light which will go offline. This one over here is green telling me the surge arrestor is still functional. In order to install the surge arrestor, it must be backed up with overcurrent protection. So in this DB board, I have a 63 amp overcurrent protection circuit breaker here, which I can use as the backup protection for the Type 2 surge arrestor. Now, if your DB board has a main switch that looks like this, this does not offer overcurrent protection. It's merely a disconnector. And what that means is I will not be able to connect my surge arrestor after this because this does not offer overcurrent protection. I have to have overcurrent protection before my surge arrestor. So in this DB board, I can now connect my surge arrestor just after this circuit breaker over here. Generally, we don't put the surge arrestor after earth leakage because we want to protect all the loads. For example, in this DB board, I have two neutral rails and that means I have some circuits before earth leakage. So in order to protect those circuits as well, I need to put the surge arrestor before the earth leakage, but keeping in mind it must be after an overcurrent protection. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to install it next to this circuit breaker over here. Now in this layout, I have a circuit breaker here, but it is unused. So I have an extra space here. So I can remove this one, shift this one up and install the surge arrestor. Now I've installed the surge arrestor here, but note that the main conductor is fed from the output of this main switch into the surge arrestor. So this means I still need to connect my bus bar across these three terminals to make sure that the live is shorter to there, there and there. Now it's noticeable that this surge arrestor is proud. It is raised above the other circuit breakers. So that means that my bus bar is not seating nicely. I'm just going to bend my bus bar a little bit. Right, so I've just bent my bus bar a little bit to cater for that raised section. Right, so there is my bus bar shorting this terminal to that terminal to that terminal. Now it's very important that when you connect the surge arrestor, you use a 16 millimeter cable because that is what the SAN standard specifies. That also means that if you are using a bus bar, the bus bar must be able to handle at least 63 amps. Right, now this surge arrestor in the single phase circuit is just going to be between live and earth. That means I need to connect an earth cable from there to my common earth bus bar. Now it is recommended to use at least six millimeters for the cable. Right, there is my earth cable connected to my common earth bus bar. Please make sure the length of this wire is no longer than 0.5 meters. Also, it is good practice to connect your surge arrestor as close to the input as possible. Some people's setup looks like this and they only have one main switch. This is an earth leakage with overcurrent protection. And in this case, I would connect the Type 2 surge arrestor just there because I still have to connect it after overcurrent protection. If however your setup looks like this where you have earth leakage protection that does not have overload protection but, but you have another circuit breaker over here offering you the overcurrent protection acting also as your main switch then I would connect the type 2 surge arrestor over there. So I'd go from the output of the main switch to the input of this circuit breaker and I will link those two connections together. The output of the surge arrestor will also go to the earthing bus bar like I showed in the DIN rail DB board. Whichever model of surge arrestor you use, you should check them periodically. If it operates, it will need to be replaced. This display will change and the green light which is normally on would now be off, telling you that the surge arrestor is no longer functional. When choosing your SPD device, it's a good idea to have a look at the SANS 10142 standard as well as the associated IEC standards. It's important to select the correct specification for your SPD. This includes whether it's single pole, double pole, the class of SPD, the max continuous operating voltage, voltage protection level, nominal and maximum discharge current, short circuit withstand current and environmental factors. 
there are certain mandatory markings that are required to be on the face of an SPD or at least in the data sheet. So if I have a look at these three SPDs, this does state it is type two. It should state that, although if it doesn't, it will have to state that in the data sheet. Now, having a look at this SPD, we can see that the nominal discharge current IN is five kiloamps, while this one over here is 40 kiloamps. Then having a look at the maximum continuous voltage UC, this is 275 volts. And this one over here is also 275 volts. That means that the live voltage that is connected here must not exceed 275 volts continuously. Same goes for this. The voltage protection level, however, is much higher. So we can see that this is giving you protection up to a maximum of 1.5 kilovolts. And this one over here is giving the same specification, UP less than 1.5 kilovolt. The maximum discharge current, very important, is 10 kiloamps on this one, while this one over here is 65 kiloamps. Why this is important is when you are doing your assessment, Based on the type of premises and the risk profile, one would then need to determine the maximum discharge current. Now, both of these have an indicator, as I stated in the video. And if you look at this surge protector, you will see there's no indicator. This is a much older surge protector and would no longer conform to the current standard. Because IEC 61643 specifies that the surge arrester must not puncture or show any visible damage during the impulse tests. If your SPD has operated, the physical casing may be in perfectly good order. Thus, it is difficult to determine if the SPD is damaged. There is thus a requirement that the SPD have an indicator to identify whether the SPD is in working order. When you are determining the SPD, you would then need to do a risk assessment and just some quick points. You would need to look at the environmental factors such as the lightning protection, the type of machinery in and around your premises. Are there machines with a lot of switching, relays, contactors and even motors switching on and off? And then also the equipment and facilities that you would like to protect, the economics and service interruptions, safety and costs of protection.